Good morning and welcome to uh, Allen Border Field and welcome to the ladies behind me, victorious from, uh, from Saturday's great win at Tremoyne. Uh, for the uh, World 2020, um, we have a women's tournament and a men's tournament and that's a great breakthrough to have separate tournaments which uh, bring separate things to the table. Um, there's uh, warm-up matches at Allen Border Field, uh, Australia versus the West Indies. India versus Pakistan, India versus the West Indies, Pakistan versus a qualifier and, and a qualifying match. All warm-up matches here across uh, the week, Saturday the 15th of February to Thursday the 20th of February. Um, that'll be a fantastic carnival atmosphere here at Allen Border Field. What we're hoping to make Allen Border Field into eventually over the next five years is the best boutique ground in the world for uh, as particularly a centre and a home for women's cricket. So that's our aim and that's what we'll get to with, uh, with government support. So that's a fantastic boost for us. Um, as the member was just saying, uh, boost to the economy in a tourism sense and boost to women's cricket uh, for us at Allen Border Field. The men's tournament played in October uh, at the Gabba. Uh, Saturday the 21st of, uh, sorry, 20, 31st of October, Pakistan versus New Zealand. Uh, Australia versus the winner of Group A. Monday the 2nd of November, New Zealand versus the winner of Group A. And Wednesday the 4th of November, England versus Afghanistan. So we have Pakistan, New Zealand, Australia and England playing at the Gabba uh, across that period in the men's tournament. So that's, uh, that's a great result as well. So fantastic news, um, carnival atmosphere, as the members said, uh, 2020 is the fastest growing aspect of cricket all around the world and we're very excited to be part of it. So uh, has anybody got any questions for either myself, the member, or one of these stars behind me? That's right. Um, the Gabba has obviously come into a bit of criticism recently of having fallen behind the other Yep. States venues. Do you feel it's a venue that can handle an international event like that? Yes, I do. Uh, and in fact, we're hoping that the first uh, tranche or progress on the Gabba will happen before the tournament. So uh, we had fantastic discussions with Minister De Brenny last week about the Gabba. Um, he's made the point clear that it has to be done in stages and we're confident uh, based on those conversations that the first stage of CAPEX development at the GABA will happen before these tournaments. So yeah, very, very confident. And, and, and of course, as I've said ad nauseum over the last two years, uh, it's the best ground in the world inside the fence. So there'll be some wonderful cricket played there. Can you fill us in on what those developments will Don't know at this stage, but uh, we're, we're talking to, uh, to the minister about that and they'll be fan facing uh, making it easier and more pleasant for the fans, which, as you would know, uh, Perth and Adelaide have, have jumped the gun on us. Do you feel it's a little unfair, the criticism the Gabba's populated? No. Um, I think that the Gabba is, uh, it needs to catch up. Uh, and the, the really encouraging thing about that is that everybody's on that page. Um, the government's on that page. Uh, cricket authorities are on that page. Cricket Australia, Queensland Cricket. Uh, everybody's uh, faced up to the reality and uh, we're very confident with the support we get from the government that that reality will be uh, taken square on. That's only one match involving Australia in that men's mm -hmm. draw. Um, no finals action? No. Disappointed? Oh, disappointed to that extent, but looking at the positives. Um, we see the World 2020, both men's and women's, particularly the women's, as being a fantastic springboard to get the Gabba finished and also to get Allen Border Field finished. Um, as I said earlier, we want to turn Allen Border, the vision is to get Allen Border Field as the spiritual home of women's cricket in the world. And uh, we think we can achieve that with, uh, with the government funding we've asked for. And we see uh, the World 2020 as another springboard towards that goal. So are you suggesting there could be some redevelopment here at AB Field as well? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's, uh, we have uh, had long discussions with government about that and uh, we're hoping that both federal and state governments will, uh, will see, well they do see that. See, the very encouraging thing to repeat myself is that everybody's on the same page here. They know that the government knows there's moving parts to all of this. 
uh, if the government wants us, if the government wants to free up the Gabba for more concerts and so forth, well, we need to play Sheffield Shield cricket somewhere in five years' time. We can't play it here because the wicket's not quite up to scratch. Well, we do, but we don't play all games here. So we're saying to the government, if you want us to play Sheffield Shield cricket and world-class women's cricket here, we need money here while you're doing other stuff with the Gabba. And the Gabba, of course, would still remain the home of international cricket. Do you think Queensland cricket fans will feel a bit let down by the fact that we're only going to see that one men's game? Oh, I don't think so. It's up. I think they'll they'll support the uh, tournament everywhere else in Australia supports events and tournaments, and I don't think Queensland's any different. They they support good events, well-run events, and I think uh, both the Gabba and ABF will turn on a very good event. Um, the women's final on the weekend they put up the sold-out sign, which was great. Um, yeah. The girls also got great crowds when they went up to Cairns and Mackay. Yep. Um, your sort of analysis on how. The growth in well, it's been exponential, um, and uh, it's a credit. Yeah, sure. This way. Yeah, it's been exponential, and uh, you know that's courtesy of the wonderful ladies behind me. Um, we have to be careful with the growth. I've just been having a, a conversation with the ladies about that. Uh, we don't want the international and elite level to get too far away from the from the club and grassroots of women's cricket. Um, that happened with the men's game and we don't want that to happen with the women's game. We want it to grow holistically and organically and uh, that will take a bit of management and above all else it will uh, take some good honest discussion with the players. So we're terrifically excited about the women's game a and a wonderful victory on Saturday. Gutsy. Cloud Nine afterwards, but a brilliant week for the Brisbane team. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I think it, it's not really sunk in yet because we're sort of moving on to the next thing. That's that's the way cricket goes at the moment. You you do one thing and move on to the next. But um, yeah, there there aren't still aren't words to describe the, the feeling among the group and and around the office at the moment. I think um, you know proud's a word that gets flown around and excitement for for what the group's done and. Um, yeah, it's just a, an unbelievable feeling and um, you can't replicate it anywhere. Yeah, definitely. I think um, for first and foremost, having two standalone T20 World Cups and, and the men and women separate is something that Cricket Australia has put forward and, and obviously done, done it first in the world. So I think um, having them separately is a, a massive step forward for us and obviously spending a bit of time at Brisbane, I'm a bit biased, but I think our facilities are, are some of the best in the world. So to provide training facilities for the female programs that are coming over here is just outstanding. And I think um, having the opportunity to play a warm-up game here as well is pretty special too. How much would you welcome redevelopment of the Gabba and this facility? Yeah, massively. I think um, the government's been a, a huge supporter of women's cricket and men's cricket um, in Queensland for a number of years and um, the fact that they're getting behind the dreams and aspirations we have for providing a, a world-class facility for players, spectators, fans, um, people in the office and things like that is um, a great for the game moving forward. Mind tingling feelings thinking about that. Yeah, I think especially after what we saw on the weekend, um, you know, although there was only, uh, I guess, five and a half thousand people there, and for the World Cup they want nearly ninety thousand. It's an amazing, um, I guess, dream, and hopefully becomes reality to you know the two lucky teams that obviously get to make that final at the MCG, and to do it here in Australia would be absolutely amazing. Disappointed there aren't more home games. Oh, yes and no. I guess um, you know Brisbane the. The supporters here are amazing to us and we love playing here at Allen Border Field. It's you know, obviously our home training facility as well as home ground and it's always a, a great wicket and a great field here. Um, but at the same time we're happy to spread the love around Australia and um, show the world what we have. DK, you were part of the uh, World Cup win squad already and you won the WT20 with the Queensland Fire a couple of years ago. How do celebrations change in that time in terms of fan interaction? Yeah, massive. I think when we won the um, women's T20 back in 2013-14, uh, it was at the Wacker and probably, I couldn't tell you the crowds, but maybe a thousand at max was there and um, to have a sellout at Dremoyne, um, being the underdogs with maybe only 50 people going for us, um, yeah, it was an amazing experience and I guess it 
it shows that over the years how much the game has grown and the support we're getting from you know everyone whether it's the broadcasters the media um, the fans um, it's absolutely amazing and it's great to see how much the game's grown in such a short amount of time how much fun has the last few days been? <laughs> yeah it's been really fun i think like beth said it's it's still hard to sort of put into words and i think it's still sinking in and um yeah we've acknowledged that moments like that doesn't happen very often so we've tried to make the most of it um yeah it's been great fun are you feeling with the events of the last couple of days yeah, I was kind of reiterate what the other two girls have said, that it's kind of difficult to, to describe. Um, we've obviously worked really hard, not only over this season, but the three previous big bashes as well. And um, yeah, to, to finally finish off the season the way that we know as a group that we could have, um, yeah, it feels really special. And um, yeah, it would, would be nice to kind of celebrate a little bit longer, but yeah, we're kind of straight back into the WNCL competition. Now that you've sort of established yourself in national colours as well, what would it mean to you to play in a World T20 match here in your home state? Yeah, it'd be really special. I think um, the the two girls and myself as well, that we've been fortunate enough to, to be involved in a few international games here previously as well. And the love and the support that we've got from, from fans here in Brisbane and, and all over Australia as well has been really special. And... Um, yeah, I think to, to have an event like a World Cup um, in your own back door, uh, that would be, yeah, phenomenal. Given how good the facilities are, I mean, let's face it, this is a pretty good place to play cricket. Do you ever get surprised when you hear criticism of Queensland cricket facilities? Uh, a little bit at times, but I think as well you, you look at the way that the game is going um, around the world and even within Australia you've got venues like Adelaide Oval and obviously Optus Stadium as well now that there's all these new redevelopments happening and places are always trying to think about better ways to do things and I guess with fan interaction and engagement that you kind of got to think well what's the best experience for them as well because ultimately you're, you're providing entertainment for them as well and um, yeah I think you got to be able to create facilities to to enable that to, to happen to the best of its ability and um, it's really exciting obviously hearing that there's going to be redevelopments not only at the Gabba but also here at AB that we spend all our time here is in the women's program and um, yeah to to see what could eventually come out of that it's, it's a pretty exciting time. And have that warm up tournament here as well with so many countries that'd be great. Yeah it'd be good to be able to show people from around the world what we have to offer here in Brisbane and um, yeah obviously us three would be pretty biased to, to say that this is one of the best facilities in the world and um, yeah, we obviously have the, the NCC here and um, we train here all, all year round pretty much with the Australian setup as well as in Queensland. So, um, yeah, to be able to showcase to a lot of other female cricketers um, as well as their fans, um, yeah, it's pretty special. Yeah. Jess, do you think the couple of your heat teammates that are behind you might be in the mix to make that squad? in the future for Australia? Yeah, obviously you saw the likes of Sammy Jo Johnson and how she performed during the Big Bash and obviously giving, getting the opportunities to bat up the order and she was exceptional with the new ball as well and um, yeah, I think that she'd definitely be somebody that's in the, the talks of national selectors, um, not only with that T20 competition in T20 but also our upcoming 50 over series against New Zealand. I think that's a really exciting position to be in and Obviously we're very proud of any Queenslander that could potentially get a call up.